Hey, I love to my little friend. The weather's been hot, fishing's been good, everyone's catching fish. Got a great report for you. Before we get into the report, let's check out a few of the picks for the fish that have been caught this week. Thanks for joining me guys. This is the weekly In Deep on the Delta Fishing Report for the week of July 4th. I'm out here at Paradise Point. I think it's about 6 in the morning. You're going to hear some boats moving in and out of here. Uh, everybody's trying to get out early, get their fishing in and get off the water. As you guys know, uh, it's been 100 degree, degree plus. For the next week we're going to have temperatures anywhere from about 104 to 109 degrees. So. We're going to fight through the traffic here and uh, give you guys a good report. First line of business today, I got to say hi to my friend Carter. I met Carter at the bank, uh, at the dock on Tuesday and uh, we chatted a little bit. Carter, thanks for stopping by. You and your dad Steve stopping by and saying hi. Got a picture with Carter. Carter went out and caught a nice fish so I wanted to congratulate Carter on that nice catch and Carter, get out there. I know you're going to catch a bigger fish this summer. Make sure you send me a picture of that next big fish you catch. So with that, let's get right into um, uh, the drawing and then we'll talk about uh, the um, what's been going on this last week. So we're still going through the 10,000 subscriber gives away, giveaways. That first week we had an in deep on the Delta trip giveaway and a, and a river to sea give, giveaway. Both of those have been spoken for. Congratulations to Rich for the uh, in deep uh, half day trip and Tiger Tank for the river to sea uh, bait package. Second week we had three baits. Uh, uh, Scott uh, Shubin, he got the Ram Rat. Josh, he got the Big Nasty. Now, Gary Meto, um, G-A-R-Y-M-E-T-O. You have a Delta Glider that still hasn't been claimed, so Gary, you have one more week to get a hold of me for that Delta Glider from Delta Glides. It's a striper bait, and you can, you can contact me at scooper956 1032 at gmail.com, and that's Gary Meto. If I haven't heard from you by next uh, Thursday. We're going to put that Delta Glider back up uh, uh, on, on, the, uh, on the shopping block. So the third week, we uh, have two more winners, and uh, we had a half-day trip. The winner of that was Victor Sperry. Congratulations, Victor. Remember, Victor, you've got to give me a hit at uh, um, my uh, Gmail. That's Victor Sperry. Give me a, a call. And for the $50 gift certificate from the Bass Hole, I've got a, I've got a, uh, just, um, I'm not going to try to pronounce this. It's Pro, P-R-O-S-U-S-H-D-A-R-K-E-D. -S so it's Pro Hushed, Hush Dart, P-R-O-H-U-S-H-D-A-R-K-E-D. Or EO. I don't know. Maybe I've got bad spelling here, but you know who you are. So you guys give me a call again at my Gmail, scooper956 1032. Now, the fourth week, coming up next week, I've got two bait packages. One of them is going to be from CNC Baits, the other bait package is going to be from Bait Chuckers. If you guys don't know Adrian over at CNC or Michael from Bait Chuckers, these guys are not only two of the I'm going to say the top guys on the Delta, but the top bait makers in, in Central California. And above that, both Adrian and Michael have supported not only me, but they support guys all over the community here on the Delta. I know Adrian, he's giving away baits all the time. He's supporting local fishermen. Michael's the same way. They've got good baits. Adrian, I hope you're going to put some of these toads that you've been making. Adrian's making a special... Uh, specially designed toad to fish subsurface. Hopefully those will be in some of the bait packs. Michael already has his bait pack. We'll show you that. Michael's got a bunch of really cool trailers and some very specific colors. So remember 
CNC baits and bait chucking support these guys. They're supporting everybody out Before here. Before we get into the report, I've got to clear one little piece of controversy up. Last week I was out all night. I showed you guys a picture of one of the Sasquatch that I've seen out there. I've seen three of them, but created some controversy. And I'm glad to see that uh, a lot of you folks that are watching the channel have also seen these, but I may be able to clear this situation up. One of the subscribers uh, came in and, and commented, and I'm going to leave his name um, uh, anonymous because I don't want to get him in trouble. But he advised me, and he basically said something to the lines that, hey, Steve, I hate to burst your bubble, but that Sasquatch, well, here's the situation. My mother-in-law was out doing a little bank fishing that same night. <laughs> Let's get back to the regular uh, uh, report. It's been hot. You guys know it's been hot. I've had temperatures reported from 75 to 83 degrees. I'm sure that that 80 to 85 is going to be hit this week, especially surface temperatures with the weather. Uh, you know, getting up to upwards of 110 in the daytime. And I think this hot weather, at least for me and from what I've been hearing from everybody out there, it's really kicked on the largemouth bass. Now the stripers, they're still out there, but they have kind of disappeared from the central delta. Let's get into largemouth. And the word last week was everybody was catching a lot of fish, but a lot of rats. Everybody's still catching a lot of fish but they're starting to be more and more of these females that are recovering from spawn and the bigger fish are starting to show up. You're still going to go through a lot of rats, but the bigger fish are starting to show. Most people are going out super early, fishing till 8, 9, 10 o'clock, or they're going in the evening. That's I'll say this, don't drop your guard. I have, um, I've been having a blast throwing my spinning rod. You know, last week uh, we're catching a lot of smaller fish in that one to two pound class. Uh, I hooked a couple of big fish. Luckily, last week I had those on um, on substantial rods, and I was able to land them. This week, I I'm not going to say I've been surprised, but I, I, through my own stupidity, I've thrown baits with a spinning rod in where they shouldn't be, and when that happens, a big fish comes up, and I've lost a couple of them in weeds. Uh, this next week, uh, I will not let that happen. No matter where you're fishing. Lots of people are talking about fishing around wood. If you've got tulies with wood, fish around that wood. Shade is becoming extremely important out here, uh, especially after the sun comes up. Find these shaded banks. It can prolong your bite window by 45 minutes to an hour. If you are fishing through midday, I'm getting more reports. Guys are catching fish punching, and I think that's going to get better and better and frogging. These fish that have been more on the outside of things uh, in the last couple weeks with this heat, high sun, hot sun, they're getting in under the shade. If you guys are out around Frank's track and you got some docks to fish, I'd really start looking at docks, places that have shade. Um, the bass are on the bite. Uh, Toxic Baits had their tournament last week. I was out there um, Saturday. Great tournament. They had about 40 boats. Um, the, the weights weren't huge. It was a three fish tournament, a short day, six hours, and I think 11 and a half pounds won, uh, 10 and a half was second, and I think nine and a half was third. So, you know, 11 and a half pounds, that's almost a four pound average. I think that group got a seven and a half, so that's a little skewed. They had a seven and a half and a couple of small fish. I know Rob Cloutier from the Bass Hole ended up in, um, in second place, and I think he had one that was five, but you know, Three pound, four pound average for, for three fish, half a day tournament, not bad. What I will say is I talked to many of the guys that were out there fishing, everybody was super happy with the tournament and they were super happy with their day of fishing. No matter where they were, talked to the um, um, NorCal angler, he went way up north, caught a ton of fish, just couldn't get you know the big hogs. Everybody caught a lot of those two, two and a half pound fish. You know, if you can get a three or four, put a couple of those together, you, you could win the tournament. But everybody caught a lot of fish. Everybody had a lot of action. And I got to give it to um, Caesar. Uh, everybody's having a great time out there. He had some food, uh, food trucks out there and just, you know, uh, it, it was a nice tournament. So um, congratulations to all you guys that, that fished that tournament. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what I've been doing, and, and I don't like fishing in 105 degree heat. So I've been getting out about 430. The bite generally dies about seven. Uh, the compressed bite dies about seven, the top water bite. At that point, I start looking for shade and I can, I can you know, uh, get a few more, uh, a pretty good bite window for another half an hour, 45 minutes if I'm in the right spot. 
Uh, and at that point, after about eight o'clock, I've kind of been hanging it up. I have done a couple two a days where I come out, you know, early in the morning and um, then get out about 7.30 in the evening. The evening bite is very good. Just talked to a couple of buddies at the dock uh, that have been fishing evenings. It's been very good. Still going to wade through a lot of rats. The three baits you're going to want, you're going to want a, a topwater bait like a Rico or a bubble walker, a small bait, a popper for when you get those nights when it's just flat calm. If you get a little bit of breeze, get a, a walking bait like a, um, a rover or a spook. The faster moving baits uh, I have not been doing real, really well on, but I have not done very well at all on a, um, on a, a buzz bait this year. I've substituted that buzz bait with a mid-size whopper plopper and I'm picking up fish on that. Make sure you're stopping that and make sure you're you know, moving that in an S uh, direction by using your rod tip as it's coming in, you'll get more bites. So that's one key uh, if you're fishing um, uh, morning and evening. Keep that top water on. You're going to go through a lot of rats. Don't drop your guard. There's some big fish that will come up in between those rats. And also, when you're fishing that popper, start off fishing slow. In the mornings, fish as slow as you can. Once the fish start biting, then you can speed up and start covering water. I can also tell you this. Get three bites in the morning. They're all small fish and they all miss the bait or you don't hook them. You're not going to be in for one of those good mornings. When the fish have been on a bite, you know right away. That, you know, within 10 minutes, you get that first bite. It comes up and swallows it. Be on guard because that's going to be a, a, a good day of fishing. Now, it has been a little bit inconsistent. You know, it's always good in the morning, but there's good days and there's great days, and that's what I'm talking about. You'll know when those great days are there because these fish, um, when they're, they're eating it, all these baits are in their mouth, and you can just tell from day to day. Another thing I'll, I'll talk about, and I should have asked this question, for some of you guys that may know the answer, hit me up in the comments. I've been seeing the spray boats out, and I talked to them the other day. They are spraying all subsurface vegetation. They're not spraying the surface vegetation. So if you guys are punching, think about that. When you see the boats out there, they're not spraying the surface vegetation. So if you've got, uh, you know, whether it's whatever you have on surface that you like to um, uh, fish, that should be there for the rest of the summer. Here's the question I need to ask them. They're doing the subsurface vegetation spraying now. Up until maybe two or three weeks ago, they were spraying the uh, surface vegetation. I'm wondering if when they're spraying that subsurface vegetation, it's usually pellets, I believe, when they come to an area that has some hyacinth or whatever we're going to be punching, do they bypass that or do they go around and spray the edges of it? If you guys know that, give me a holler. If not, I'm going to try to get a hold of one of the biologists and see what they do. And I also would like to know if they spray around the edges, if that underneath the surface vegetation, you're still going to have that good clean um, subsurface vegetation. That could be a key for some of us or some of you that like to punch in the summer knowing, you know, kind of their patterns of spraying. But if you guys have any of those answers, give me a holler. Last but not least, this is going to to be something that, that some of you won't understand, but you guys that are out there that know the Delta and fish the Delta a lot, this might be for you. Most of the time I'm talking to the average guys and this may go over some of your heads, but I'm going to tell you this. Fish places that no longer exist. What the hell is that? This is what I'm talking about. The last couple years, we've had a lot of water flow. 10 years of drought, last couple years, a lot of water flow. Places that used to exist, especially on tule points and on flats where there could have been small patches of tules that may, may only be as, as big around as what I'm showing you here. They may be the size of, you know, um, a bathtub. They're no longer there because with the water flow that we've had in the last couple of years, it's swept those places clean and where you used to see tules or stuff above the surface, it's no longer there. But guess what? That berm is still underwater. So I have been looking at a lot of those places and a lot of times it's, it's points where you'd have tule and then you've got an offshore tule and some, some lighter clumps of offshore tule. And there may be three or four clumps of tules as you go off those points. Now there's just a point. There's no tules offshore. Just remember, those offshore tule berms, 
the berm is still underwater. So when you are fishing those areas that you know used to ha be like that, don't run over them in your boat. Go way around the point, fish over the point with top waters, use um, chatter baits, um, things that you can bring across those areas. At low tide, you can find these, and I, this is where I have been excelling this week, and I'm not a low tide guy. I've just been going out to a lot of the flats that I know, and I have found areas that say, you know, there used to be, I used to look at a, a, tule, a small tule berm out there, and that's how I used to get my bearings on this, but that tule berm's not there. Pull up closer to that tule berm, and I can see, yep, there it is, but you can't see it, you know, even at low tide because it's, it's underwater. Those are the places that I've been fishing and I've been catching some bigger fish on those. So with that, if you're going out, stay out of the heat. If you're going to fish midday, make sure you stay hydrated and, uh, you know, don't kill yourself out there. Chatter baits have been working. Uh, crank baits have been working. Buzz baits, I would drop those off my list. I, I haven't been fishing them a lot. Replace it with a whopper plopper early and late. Topwater bites the only way to go. Six and seven inch worms are, are doing better on the bigger fish. Throw a five inch worm on a spinning rod if you just want to get bit and catch a bunch of fish. You will go through a bunch of rats, but again, don't drop your guard because you're going to get a, a big fish come up on there and you're going to want to have a chance to land that. So stay on guard. Um, punching and frogging is starting to, to pick up and I think it's going to pick up more and more as the, um, as the weather gets heated. So if you guys are looking for a tournament bag, I would definitely have a punch rod and I'd, I'd be punching everything that I could right now. With that, uh, that's about, uh, you know, all the information I could give you. I want to thank you guys for staying with me. We're going to have more of these uh, giveaways for the next couple weeks. I've got uh, more baits coming in. We're going to do some more stuff with Rob over at the Bass Hole. Anybody that's made a report, get, sent in a report or sent in a comment, you guys are in the skew for uh, having your name drawn. Uh, if you haven't made a comment yet, make sure you uh, send something in so if you want, want one of these gifts. And again, I'll, I'll continue talking about everybody that's donated baits to me because these are local guys that are uh, supporting not only In Deep on the Delta, but they're supporting Delta anglers. So thank you guys for watching. Until next week, good luck, and we'll see you guys on the river.